Well, hello there. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I am your host, Crystal Crawford. I, you know, I say that stuff mostly for the recording of this because I know that you guys that watch me every week know who I am. But just in case somebody stumbles on an episode and they don't know who I am, I want to start. I want to. I want to preface it and tell you guys who I am. So anyway, welcome to this week's show. Welcome to Canada. Hi guys. Hi Sherry Lee. Hi Lil. I am in. Uh, I'm near Toronto, Canada. I just flew in last night. I was just in England, and now I'm just in Canada. That's how fast flight is. <laughs> hi Christiane. Hi Nikki. Hey guys. So I call this week's episode. Um, I have to look. It was I just looked at it and then I forget immediately. I call this week's episode being irrational, insane, and all the fun things we avoid so people don't leave us. <laughs> because I have just had a very um intense uh probably 3 weeks of really really choosing things, choosing things. That's one of the things about traveling the world. Um hi Christian, hi Sylvia. Hey, hey, hey. It, the way that I've been doing is that you have to stay in a constant state of choice and um, Good morning from New Zealand. Hi Tracy. Hi Danielle. Hi Deb and uh, So so this is this topic is really fresh up in my world. I also have a new hey Isa nice to see you I have a new class starting. We're actually gonna start it in a month, but this class that I've put out in the world called advanced insanity and um, I was talking with my team this morning just about the class and the fucking in your faceness of it and we were just looking at like, hey, what's really required to like, you know, put this class in the world and blah, blah, blah. And so I started looking at, I started looking at the topic like I do and <laughs> realizing that for me and for a lot of the crazy people that I know, some of you are on here, choosing because we can choose because we can choose because we choose is like a way of life. Uh, my good friend Virginie, she's another facilitator who lives in Europe right now, and she's a French French translator and brilliant, speaks like four languages fluently. And um, she and I were traveling together for the last three weeks, and I was ch I was chatting with her today a little bit about the way she's choosing to live her life. And um, and what I realized is that in the conversation of inviting us all to this advanced insanity, it, there's two things going on. One is that you can't actually have your reality, what you'd like to have as your life, when you are functioning from doubting yourself, or when you're functioning from blaming yourself or other people, or when you're functioning from shame, the shame of your choices or guilt, all of which are what are called distractor implants. So you, at some point, are implanted and explanted with a point of view that you then agree with or resist, which is the only thing that can stick a point of view in place, and then you start functioning from it. So, you know, you'll hear people talk about how bad they feel after they make a choice, or I can't do that because grandma would whatever, or, oh, my husband would never let that fly, or, you know, all the things and the reasons and the justifications that we give for not actually choosing in a way that would be really fun for us. And that's why I called the show this. It's like being irrational, being insane, and all the fun things we avoid so people don't leave us. So, <laughs> I'm actually really open to your questions around this topic just so I can make this relevant to you. For me, I've realized recently, I, you know, for the last three months I've been on the road, like really not home at all. I really airbnb in my place. I've been traveling from place to place. And I realized recently that one of the, I, that I never would have done this before when I was married. Um, in my last relationship, he had a real point of view about me not being with him and and had a real point of view about the way I was in the world like I was flirty I, I, I incited all this attention you know and so I let his opinions about me control me I let that control the way I showed up in the world the way I t chose things and one of the things that really gave me the space to change our relationship that in a way that it really needed to change was a 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat that I did where you had no phone, no contact with the outside world. You were meditating all day, every day for 10 full days. And so it was the first time in our whole relationship where I'd been away for that long. And not only was I away, but I actually couldn't, you know, connect with him or anything because I was on this retreat. And I got back and it empowered me so much that I was super clear on what I needed to choose next. 
But we get into this weird ass thing where we can only either choose for us and against other people or for other people and against us, which is still this very, very limited menu of choice. And I hear a lot of people doing this and you know, I'm gonna choose for me, choose for me. And, and the energy of it has in it inherently, I'm choosing against other people and for me. And for the first time, I'm gonna choose for me. That is not the conversation that I'm having in my life and today. And that's not a conversation that actually works because in that conversation, you're still doing judgment. You're still doing like, well, I can't choose for you, so I'm gonna choose for me. It's still this either or reality. And what I'm interested in, in furthering in the world and in my own life is, the, is a conversation of what's beyond that. What's beyond the for me or for you and no other choices in between? Like, should I stay or should I go? Or kind of the two choices we only ever give ourselves. But we don't even like, we don't even, we aren't even taught. We're not taught and we don't look at, hey, what will this choice create? If I choose this, what's it gonna create? is the conversation that goes beyond this reality. This reality is should I stay or should I go? What, what will this choice create is beyond this reality. Why? Because you with that question and the choices in front of you are starting to actually take responsibility for the fact that your choices create. That's all, they just create. You know, so I'll give you an example from my life in this past week, like I was in Europe, I had an amazing foundation class in Nice um, we traveled a bit to Italy, which was amazing. I did some videos from there, also amazing, all of it amazing. And my, and, and so we were in Italy and my plan was, I created this plan, like, I don't know, a month ago, booked the Airbnb for it, created the plan, created all the things around it, was to go to London, England for a couple, three weeks and just create, I work online, I can create anywhere and then do some live classes there and then do some live classes in Greece. Cool, that's the plan. Those are the choices made. Well, I have a thing in my world where I really like to keep my word. If I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. If I have to change it, I will tell you I'm changing. I will loop you in and, but I really, really, really like keeping my word, it's, it's a thing. So for me, scheduling classes and not doing them is, is really not my thing. And I know people that do this. They schedule classes and they're like, well, it doesn't feel light anymore. This, this I does, it doesn't feel light is bullshit, by the way. That's just a reason and a justification for, for not doing it. But there are some times when, you, when you've chosen a thing and it doesn't actually create anymore. Like it was a good idea in the moment. It may or may not have been created out of it. It got created when it got created. Now here we are in this moment and you have to just look at it again. You have to always be willing to look at things. Not from like, oh, I can flake out on this if I want to and it doesn't feel light, but from like, is this actually creating anything anymore? Because my world is like contracted and chunky and it doesn't have that flow. And so can I make any other choices that would actually give this flow? Hey, hi, I love you guys. Um, so I start, so so when I get to these spaces and places where things start don't don't have flow anymore, I actually do like wipe the slate clean. And I do this in relationships. I do this with I do this with everything. And I've learned that that's kind of a weird thing. I literally go if I could fire all my choices right now, all my plans, no matter how much they cost me. And literally, guys, I lost a bunch of money making these choices. But that's just from one point of view. Like I spent a bunch of money. I create, used money to create some choices. And then I made some new choices that also used more money. And I realized that part of what was happening for me with this choice to like be in England for a couple of weeks and cancel the venue and everything, part of what I was doing with that was, well, I've already spent this money and so therefore I should stay, which is a projection and an expectation and a conclusion, not a question. And what was happening for me was this apartment that I chose, I literally could not find or drum up the energy to continue creating. I was literally gonna probably be in that apartment in England, like watching Netflix for a week. And I'm like, that, that, I'm doing that for what reason? When I've got these other places I could go and be with people that nurture me, that I could actually create with and be with and enjoy and other spaces that just contribute more. And I would stay there because money for what reason? But let me tell you something, looking at things from that point of view in this reality is considered insane. You are considered irrational. That I made a bunch of irrational choices. And the reason I called the show this is because 
as you're moving forward and creating your life, you have to be willing to be that. It's just a judgment, but you gotta be willing to be it. You gotta be willing to be irrational, you gotta be willing to be insane, and you gotta be willing to function from an awareness that nobody can see but you. I, you know, and so it's funny, because I, I, I do this all the time, I change things so fast that people around me actually can't really keep up. And, you know, like I got an email back from the one I sent about my show today, and I said, you know, hey, come meet me on my page at three, three o'clock, Eastern Standard Time and, and somebody wrote back and she's like, wait, don't you mean Central Eastern European Time? And I'm like, nope, I mean Eastern Standard Time, like come join me or don't join me. But I used to not choose the way I can choose because it would throw other people off and they wouldn't be able to keep up and they would feel bad or they blah, 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 on and on. And I don't do that anymore. And this is, this is something, this is a muscle that you have to be willing to strengthen that has nothing to do with anything except the choices that you have available to you and you have choices available to you that nobody else has I don't know very many people that can choose in the way that I can choose and that's just real that's just true there are people around you that you may have decided can choose the things that you do they cannot not they won't they just cannot so when you do this thing of slowing yourself down or not making the choices that are actually available to you because you have to explain them or you've decided you can't or this person won't, might get left behind, what you do is you negate you, you negate you, and you don't include you in the computation of what, what's actually available. And when I looked at the choices I had available this in the last few days, I was like, I can do whatever I want here. I can book another place in London. I could stay. For what reason am I staying in London? Because mm, I thought I should. You know, I could, um, well, because other people want me to be there, because other people, and I was like, I looked at that, I looked at that, and I was like, I really value the people that I could meet while I'm here, like a lot. And those of you guys that are watching me live, like, I am hugging you one day, that will happen. I also really include me, and I needed a level of care and nurturing that wasn't available in London at that time. And so if I were gonna truly take care of me and include the future and include all these other facets of my life, I had to be willing to look from a place that you know most people wouldn't look from. Thank you, Daniel. So are you, you that is something that only you can choose to be for you. The weird thing is that it also includes other people even when it even when it doesn't seem that way to them or even when it doesn't look that way on the surface. When you truly include you, not out of resistance or reaction or you know, alignment or agreement, you're just I I'm taking care of me too. All of a sudden you include everybody else. And that's it's a weird phenomenon that most of us don't realize because we're so busy functioning from guilt and blame and shame and regret, all these distractors that keep us from actually having us and having the awareness that would empower us to have life worth living for all of us. When I choose to create life worth living for me, what comes out of that is this energy that creates life worth living for all of us. So, but when I choose to function from guilt or I feel bad, life worth living gets pushed to the side in favor of this other thing that contracts everything for everybody. And so my invitation with advanced insanity is it's, it's advanced insanity to truly function from choice. That is you choosing to be something in the world most people don't choose. It is advanced insanity to go beyond guilt and blame and shame and truly look at what does this choice create. If I choose to go home, even though that seems wrong, does it create more, yes or no, yes. Okay, book in the ticket, Never mind and not putting any more thought into it or feelings into it or any thinking or any need for validation even for myself or any need for explanation, just going, just choosing. That's advanced insanity. In this reality, that's irresponsible, that's irrational, that's insane, that's flaky. Okay, I'm willing to be all that. I'm willing to actually know what I know without the need to explain it to even me. And I tell you that to invite you to look at your world. You know, do you feel the need to explain yourself to anybody? Do you try to make yourself make sense? 
And what if you didn't? And it may require, which is why I created the class, it may require to clear some stuff, you know, because these distractor implants, there's 24 of them, and four of them are life and living and death and reality. Those are four of them. Life is a distractor implant. Living is a distractor implant. Death is a distractor implant. Reality is a distractor implant. You know, we use, we, we're like in and out of distractor implants so much that, you know, it's, it's hard to even recognize them until you start to kind of pull it apart and going, wow, even that. Like, if I wasn't functioning from life as a distractor implant, if I'm having a life now, and therefore, then what could I choose? You know, this is my reality. Well, if it wasn't my reality, what could I choose? Um, you know, I'm in a relationship, and so therefore, I can't, well, if it, if I wasn't in a relationship, if the relationship wasn't significant, what could I choose that would create more for all of us that would also include me? There is a, there is a gentleness and a kindness for you and an honoring of you in, beyond the distractor implants that I am really, really, really living now that is so incredible. But it, it's only something that you can discover for you. And, and so, anyway, regardless of where you go with this conversation, buy the book Living Beyond Distraction because that will start, to, that will, that will start this process. And of course, come on my class. I, it's gonna another, I'm gonna start it in a month, actually. We're gonna have a big, broader conversation about this over the next month. There's gonna be challenges and things that you can get involved in on a, on a lower level just to start to see what this can change for you. But beyond all that, like, what are you, is, are there any fun things, fun choices that would just be thrilling for you that you're avoiding so people don't leave you? The thing is that, the thing that happens when you become, when you start to become willing for people to leave you, um, some people do. I'll be honest, I've rotated friends and family, you know, several times over the past six years. Okay, fine, some people do. But what's really interesting is that the people that, can hang with you that actually really adore you as a being stick around and the things that you thought you would lose aren't even really even relevant but again that's i mean that's just me talking at you it, the question is who or what are you not willing to lose that if you were willing to lose them would give you all of you and for me in the creation of this living this business this phenomenon on the earth that we're calling Crystal Crawford. It's like this entity of consciousness, you know, for me as the steward of that and the steward of, and, and the creator and crafter and curator of living. Um, I'm not willing to not have me in that anymore. I'm not willing to not honor me. I'm not willing to not trust me. I'm not willing to not be grateful for me. I'm not willing to not be vulnerable as me anymore, as the greatness that I am. Like, what if, what if really, truly, you've never chosen anything wrong? What if you can't choose anything wrong? If you were going beyond functioning from doubt and guilt and blame and shame and anger and rage and fury and hate, if you're going beyond all that, what, what would you discover? Are you right now functioning from, I'm just wrong and I'm waiting to find out how? If I choose this or I choose this and that person leaves, then it's proof. Are you busy looking for the proof of how you're wrong? Well, what's more fun than that? Are you busy holding all of your choices in place so that your family doesn't leave or your spouse doesn't think you're crazy or you don't get seen as an insane lunatic by the way that you choose and you live your life. Um, you know, as again, I was talking to Virginie this morning and she's got a son, her, her son's nine. And she's got more mobility going on in her life than I do right now. And with a, with a, as a mother with a child, like she's living to how no mother should live according to this reality. But she's been making choices that have given her the awareness and the ability and the strength to actually be where she is now. And now she's looking at, hey, where can I live that will actually support my son and support me? You know, now she's actually having a different conversation with herself with all these choices. And so 
her willingness to be that brave and like choose and just choose and choose and choose and go and choose and be in that constant movement of choice got her here. And that's what's true about you too. Whatever you have been, whatever you've been doing, creating, having is getting you here. What are you, you know, what are you actually and truly creating for yourself in your irrational and unsensible and unlogical and chaotic ways that's actually creating more for you than you've looked at yet? And is there anywhere you're trying to order yourself into this reality's way of functioning when it doesn't function for you at all? And what if you are willing to be as insane as you truly are? That's why I love the title of the class because it plays on both sides of it. Like advanced insanity is being willing to be as insane and as irrational and as aware as you truly are. That's advanced insanity. But also advanced insanity, true insanity, is like doing the distractor implants and doing projections and expectations and separations, judgments and rejections because that shit doesn't work. That's advanced insanity. So it's a play on both of them. It's like being willing to be as insane as you truly are from the point of view of this reality, but also like going, hey man, I'm being really fucking insane with doing these guilt. Man, if, would an infinite being do guilt or would they have choice? Well, they just have choice. So what, is, what do these choices create? Well, does an infinite being use their awareness? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, what would it be like to use awareness with choice instead of conclusions with choice? I've decided this is a good idea, but I decided that. Is it, is it creating anything? Is it creating more space, more expansion? Does my life get greater if I choose this? Or is it like not? Well, if this choice is not, then for what reason am I choosing it? Never mind. So you gotta begin, it's, it's beginning to hone, hone and practice and have the abilities that you actually have available to you of Awareness, awareness of what choices create instead of functioning from the distraction of, well, this is right and this is wrong. That's a distraction. That will never, ever, ever empower you to create what you're capable of creating. It will always keep you limited and locked into this reality, which for me is not that interesting. And, and I don't know what it is for you. Like, you know what it is for you. Maybe it is interesting to always try and find the right choice based on guilt. Okay. Um, maybe it's more interesting to go on the adventure of living and choose things that are outside of that. Not from resistance, but from, well, I don't know, if I choose to say this to my mom, what does that create? And if I choose to not say this to my mom, what does that create? Does it get more spacious when I choose to say this? It does. I'm really uncomfortable. Okay, I guess I'll be uncomfortable. Because what I'm committed to is creating more space. Okay, great. And we go. Right? So, so you, you see how this conversation just, can just go all over the map. This is one of the reasons I wanted to create the class. So that we could all have a chance to really ask our questions around this. Because I know for me, I have had certain areas where these distractor implants were like really prevalent, especially with, with people in regards to people. And it got meshed up with how much I really care. Like when I actually, when I looked at staying in London, I looked at staying there so that I could actually connect with more people. And I really like that as a choice. Like I really do want to connect with you guys all over the world. There's something different about getting to hug you in person, but I, the being was struggling a lot. And I also needed to care for me, wanted to, wanted to care for me. And so I was like, what would create the most right now? Right now, there are more months, there are more choices, there are more travelings, what's gonna create the most right now? So I chose what's gonna create the most right now. Um, but you can't choose from those spaces if you don't include you. If you're always looking for right and wrong and good and bad, then you don't get to have any of that conversation with yourself. So, so what, so how many distractor implants are you using to keep yourself from being, are you choosing? There's 24 of them. You can function from them nonstop 24 seven. Um, it, it, you'll know, you'll know, you'll know you're doing it because you'll be in your head. This is how you know you're in a distractor implant. You're in your head. You're thinking too much. You're like overthinking it. You're trying to find the right choice. Um, you're in a distractor implant. That's how you know. So... 
That's a pretty easy sign. Oh, I'm in a distractor implant. I wonder which one. Okay, never mind. If I wasn't doing a distractor implant here, what could I choose? That question alone will change your life if you use it. If I wasn't doing this, what else could I choose? If I wasn't doing this, what else could I choose? If I wasn't doing this, what else could I choose? If you truly want to empower yourself to have choice, add that question to every fucking thing that you do. And then what could I choose that would create the most for everybody? Not from your head, but like if I choose this, does that create more space? Does it give you a sense of more space and expansion? Or if you choose this, does it give you more of a sense of contraction and like closing things down? That's going to be you empowering yourself with your supernatural abilities for being aware of the future, of what your choices actually create. And that's you taking full responsibility for the creator that you are. You are the source of creation. I am the source of creation. Not from somebody crowning me with a holy glory thing. I just am. I came in as a source. Are you behaving as if you're a source? Are you choosing as if you're a source? Are you looking at what your choices create as if you're the source? You're the source of the future. You're the source of your future and the world's future. You don't have to claim that, acknowledge it, or own it. It's just true. So then as a source, how can you empower yourself to know what you're doing? Because as infinite beings, we don't have brain and right and wrong and thing to know that we're doing it right. There is no right. There is no wrong. But there is a sense of what things create. Are you willing to know it? Are you willing to be that powerful? If you were, would your life get easier? I'm grateful for you, for this. It's social media, so if this is a gift to you and you'd share it, I'd be grateful again. And I will continue to talk about this. I'll continue to invite you to both the class and this possibility and would just ask you to really integrate the information about the distractor implants into your universe so that you can be empowered and actually be the creator that you are to create a different reality for you and for everyone. So give us a share if you loved it. Um, tag your friends. I'll see you next week. <laughs>